everyone just stand to your feet. Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is in the house. And we honor you today, God. Be enthroned on our praise today, God. And I just admonish every person in here, just flow from your heart. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth today and declare his greatness. God, because you are great and greatly to be praised, God. Oh, God, we lift you up today, God. And you said if you be lifted up from the earth, God, you would draw all men unto yourself, God. Oh, God, not unto us, God. Oh, God, but all glory and honor be unto you, God. Oh, God, stir up your waters in this place, God. Stir up your waters in this place, God. Because it's a mighty rushing river in this place, God. Your spirit flowing, God. And we thank you that you're gonna move mightily among us, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you because you are good and you are great and you are greatly to be praised, God. So we lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up to the ground. Hallelujah.
children at this time. Start off today by, and we just left, uh, by just um, thanking God for my husband. Um, yeah. 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 Um, he is by nature a natural born leader. Yes. Um, it's just who he is. He can't not lead. It's just and by nature, I am not a natural born leader. But when you are yoked to someone who is, it pulls what is in you and that's supposed to be worked out. out. Right. So I would not be able to stand before you today and do what I do if it was not for being yoked to my husband. Yes. I mean that from my heart. Um, so, Rihanna, thank you for sharing the word. Bria, you guys, thank y'all for worshiping with us today. And just help me bring the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to start today by sharing, along with the message of the weeds, and how this impacted my testimony. And, uh, and we can shut that door if you want. Um, and you guys, y'all can go sit with your families whenever you want. You can do whatever you want. I, whatever. I don't, I don't even care. Um, but I want to share with you guys my testimony. I've never shared my testimony. And I am, my, ch my child's never even heard my real testimony. So um, I am, I'm going to start off with the first 10 years of my life was great. I had, from the ages of one through 10, you know, I had the, a family where things were great. I had everything that I needed. Grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. Mom was in the choir, dad was a deacon. I was helping with children's ministry. My daddy taught, we lived in a two-story house on a hill in the country in a beautiful place, good school. Uh, you know, had two brothers, had a whole course, got to experience country life, got to uh, go out in the in the streams and pull up my, my pant legs and put leaves around my feet and walk around in the creek beds like I was, you know, living in the wild. You know, that's how I grew up, dirt between my toes, going picking apples from the orchard off my grandmother's uh, in the backyard and having Sunday dinner after church every Sunday. So that's, that's how I grew up. Got $40 for my uncle on my birthday. Got $20 from that one. I'd have 100 bucks in my pocket, go to the mall, shop, go to the beach every summer. That's how I grew up. Sounds great, right? On my 10th birthday, <laughs> uh, my dad called us all in for a family meeting. And family meetings always got very excited. The first family meeting that I had, they said, guess what? We're going on a cruise to the Bahamas. Woohoo! Another family meeting, they called us in. My dad had a bottle of champagne. Don't ask me why he was giving us champagne. <laughs> we had a bottle of champagne, and we were uh, excited <laughs> because we were celebrating promotion or something. And so every time Dad called a family meeting, <laughs> it was time to meet, and I got excited. So it was my 10th birthday, the week of my 10th birthday. And my daddy called us in, family meeting, I'm excited. So we go sit around the table. I can still see the, the wood grain in that table, the smooth finish from the 80s with one of those tea, those leaves that you pull out and you can sit a, people at 12 around it. I still remember it. And we were sitting there, and my dad said, this is going to be a short family meeting today. And I was like, okay, let's go get the cake. And he said, your mother and I are getting a divorce. And that, in that moment, was the first moment where the hand that held me dropped, mm -hmm. and I fell. It was the first time that I felt that pitch black darkness in my life. And I can remember running down the hall, getting on my top of my mom and dad's bed, their big California King bed, and jumping on top of the mattress, looking into their big mirror, on the wall and screaming with tears and snot coming down my face, no, 
like what you'd see in a movie where I'd lose my voice later. And me and my brothers all jumped in my parents' bed, and we were just devastated. And um, my parents saw the devastation on us, and they loved us so much. They are like, we can't do this to y'all. So I realized later on the next four years of our life was going to be hell because they were going to try to work it out. And, you know, and I, I don't want to share their business, you know, of why they were getting divorced. You know why people get divorced. What the devil comes in and separates marriage, makes you think you're better with someone else. And so I mean, that's basically what happened. And um, from that point on, my dad turned to alcohol and my mom turned to just, she was just in a dark place. And so what went from one night being, or one day, or era of my life, being this little Southern Baptist girl, everything's going good, singing in the church choir, to now her every night when she's going to sleep, hearing uh, chairs and tables, you know, being thrown around and people being thrown up against the wall and uh, Mama having bruises on her face and having to lie to my fifth grade teacher while I was late to school. And the truth was, my daddy was drunk and got in his pickup with a shotgun saying he was leaving to go kill himself and instead hit a telephone pole and couldn't get to school on time. So you can't tell that to your fifth grade teacher. <laughs> and some of y'all have very similar testimonies, way worse than mine. But this was when the enemy came and sowed the first seed of the weeds. And so for the next four years, I didn't realize, but the sower of the weeds was coming into my room every night. Fear, anxiety. My mama telling me, you know, Christy, I've just been in the closet praying that I would die. I would die. I'm just praying that I'll die. A seed of death being sown. Finally, I was 14 and my mom came to me and she's she was folding clothes in, a, in, our, uh, in our sunroom, beautiful white sunroom, everything wool, white, white tapestry on the wall, white, beautiful wool furniture with a balcony, you know, that you could oversee. And uh, I walked in there after school, and she said, Christy, I'm leaving. I can't do this anymore. And, and I said, well, I'm going with you. Because at that time, I was scared of my daddy because he was drunk every night. And, you know, when somebody's drunk, especially on liquor, it, it changes them. They're not a person anymore. They become that spirit. Right. And it's scary for a little girl, especially when you're in that preteen stage where you're changing over. And I was very confused. It was very scary. I was so fearful to get off the bus. And... Y'all be patient with me because this is the first time I've done this. So it's like the, the spirits that I have truly had to overcome, um, it's like I see you. Right. There's a reason I see them right now, though, is because uh, some of you have dealt with that. And yeah. so when, I, when I'm around someone that's dealt with it, I can feel that spirit, and I know it's time to, for the anointing to be released uh, for your breakthrough. So yes. um, <laughs> that's why that's happening. So... Um, so we left, and we went to my grandmother's, and she had just a few uh, couple months or weeks to live. She was dying of cancer, and um, that's where we went while we were waiting our, on our apartment. And I was on the, the phone rang, and back then you don't have caller ID, so you don't know where people are calling mm -hmm. from or where you're at. And so I, and I, they gave me the phone, and I can't remember. He called, they called him, I don't remember. All I remember is they handed me the phone, and I was on the phone with my dad. And he said, Christy, very calmly like this, very calm. He said, Christy, if you don't tell me where you're at, I'm going to kill myself. He told that to me. And he told that to me numerous times. If you don't tell me where you and your mom are at, i got a gun, and I'm going to kill myself. Telling that a seed of fear and a right. seed of death was planted. And I didn't have anybody to come cover me and protect me because my parents were strung out in their own mess up, mess. 
So here I am, open target for the enemy as a child with these weeds being sown and it's hurting me and damaging on the inside of my soul. And so at that point, I, I didn't know what to do. All I knew to do was give the phone to my sick and dying grandmother. And it seems pitiful, but that's what I did. And I just remember leaving. And, uh, and, and you know, we start going on with our life. And everything was fine. You know, I just, I, I went on. I, I remember being in the eighth grade, sitting at the lunch table on this girl. She looked at me and she started making fun of me and saying, "Yeah, if you like Christy, or you know, her parents are getting divorced and her his, her dad hits her mom." Started telling all my business, and I looked at that girl as mean as I could, with every cuss word you can think of. And I say, if you mm, 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 ever say that again, I'm gonna kill you. And I. I, this anger, this rage, this death just released out of me. And everybody at that lunch table went, oh. huh. Wow. And it was like the spirit of hell came mm. and took hold of those people that were sitting around me in fear. And they're like, okay, she's crazy. Leave her alone. Because I was going through some weed, y'all. I was going through right. some torment that I didn't know how to deal with. And the reason I'm sharing this, and there's more, but the reason I'm sharing this is because there have been weeds planted in you from a young age, and you never have dealt with them. Mm. Yeah. So I have these weeds, and at this time, there's still seeds, okay? There's still seeds. So I am still enjoying the harvest of what God's put in me. I'm, you know, I'm head cheerleader, you know, homecoming queen. I'm getting asked to sing the Star Stable Banner at school, these great things, you know, and um, having to deal with other people, you know, not liking me because of the favor and just having to, you know, put things down and be like, okay, never mind, I don't want to do it because I want to have friends. I don't want people hating me. And so I would, you know, and so learning how to navigate without feeling like I had a covering and just feeling lost and searching and then when I was uh, this was after we were married and mm -hmm. in, in in my 20s I remember my brother Dallas he called me just like my daddy called me that day he said hey Christy I'm just letting you know that you know life's not working for me so I'm going to kill myself I'm just letting you know like I'm like okay, no, you're not, you know, why are you just coming to me like that? And, um, <laughs> but when he said that, I felt a spiritual darkness come and grip my soul. And it was, it was more than just a word. It was like a physical spirit that came and attached itself to me. Two weeks later, I got a call from my mom, and she was screaming, and she said, it's over, it's over, it's over. And they found my brother in a bathtub. And he had been there for over two weeks, and, and I know I'm being very blunt, and I'm trying to be as neat as I can with how I'm saying things, but I'm wanting just to kind of be raw. It's kind of who I am. And I think we cover things up in the church too much sometimes. Right. So, um, and there he was. He was gone. He did it. And that's, he, we were raised in the same household. So those weeds that had been growing, he was 29, no, 28, and they had taken fruition in his life. The weeds had grown up. So a few months later or six months or so I began dealing with suicide like you will never like unless you've gone through it you don't even know you know you can compare it to like a spirit of lust you know how when a spirit of lust comes on you it's like this rage of like mm -hmm. you've got to go have sex or you got to do something to release it it's like that but 
it's with death. And I would have this spirit come up to me while I was at the sink. And it was like it would massage my shoulders and be like, you know, it'll feel so good if you just get that knife and just end it. And it would just like caress me like, let's just go together. And I would never do it because there was my 18-month-old child sitting there. So I couldn't do it. And I thank God because if it wasn't for that, I probably would have. So instead, I would punch myself in the face and pull out my hair. And uh, it was the only thing that I could do to um, quench the pain that I was feeling. You know what I'm saying? Because what was happening now is these seeds that had been planted as weeds were now starting to take harvest in my life. And here I am on a praise team in a mega church, the Potter's House, y'all know. And they're like, Christy, we want you to sing. You know, it's going to be the New Year's service. It's going to be shown internationally on TV. So here I go, taking my weeds, stuffing them in my pockets, trying to make it where nobody can see my weeds. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, you got to wear this and this. I'm like, okay. And I'm trying to hide my weeds so that nobody sees my weeds. And because I'm like, God, I know you have a purpose for my life. <laughs> And so I want, I want to be used by you, God. But I have these weeds. And I'm, I'm afraid to let anybody see them because if they see my weeds and they see the truth, then they're not going to want me. They're going to think that I'm not good enough. And they're going to throw me to the side with the, the you know, everybody else who's messed up in life. And, and I can't let them see. So I, I'm stuffing my weeds, and, and I go through years and years of stuffing my weeds, and people think, oh, Christy, you're so amazing, you're so good. And I'm like, oh, I am? And, and, and I'm not fully believing it because I see the weeds, right. and I'm hiding them. Right. They, don't, they don't realize really the truth is it looks like that, but if you really knew what I'm dealing with on the inside, the, the trauma and the anxiety and how I have to beat my chest like this so I can breathe sometimes. Because when I was a little girl, my mom, I told my mom, I can't breathe. I can never breathe. I can never breathe. And so they would take me to the doctor and see if I had asthma. And it wasn't asthma. And so my mom would be like, girl, you, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. It was a spirit of anxiety that was beginning to take, that had taken root, that was growing up in my life. And so... I'm going to go ahead. Thank you, Lord. So I went through many years, you guys, of having to try to get rid of these weeds and thresh these weeds. It was, it was very traumatic. It was very... Um, Dark. Um, does anybody know what I'm feel, what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This darkness <laughs> that you know what I'm saying. Yeah. This is we're being real right now. Um. And and then I realized, you know, I have you ever thought that you dealt with something and then it comes back up and you're yeah. and you're almost mad yeah. that you're still dealing with it yeah. and that it's still there and you're like, are you serious? Yeah. I have prayed like 50 billion times. Yeah. Why am I still seeing you? Yeah. This is where it gets good. This is where it changes. And not just for me, but this is where it changes for you. God last night told me, I want them to understand the vastness of who I am and that I am not inside y'all's time. Because yeah. mm. until you understand that, you do not understand what God has the power to do to rid you of those things. Before I share that, I'm going to share my testimony of deliverance. So I went through many uh, times of deliverance of where I'm crying on the floor, snotting, trembling, you know, demons coming out, and that, all that, you know, convulsing stuff. You know, I went through many times of therapy or whatever you want to call it on the church floor, uh, friend's house floor. And so you think I'm delivered by now. So, one day, 
And this was like uh, a year and a half ago. And I hadn't struggled any. I really hadn't struggled. The struggles that I was having, it was very faint. It was just like I was able to overcome it. It was very mild. But the little roots were still there. And you know they were still there because, like, whatever used to trigger you, it's still, when you see that trigger, it still does something. Right. You know you're fully delivered when you see the trigger and it no longer moves you. Right. Okay? That's it. So the sign that those things were still in my life was that I was still being triggered. Like when I would look at a knife or something, I would still have that trigger. And uh, one day my friend called me and she said, uh, Christy, I, the Lord has given me a word for you. And he, she said, you were supposed to begin to go back and think about your past and everything from your past that from your childhood and begin to give the, your childhood to God and everything that you went through, you're supposed to give it to God. And I'm thinking, how can I do that when I'm not there anymore? So as she began to pray and I began to repent and confess these things from my childhood, I began to cry, but it was not crying of like what it was. It was like release. It was like joy. It was restoration. It was like rain on my soul. And from that moment over, the triggers were gone. I never had a relapse. I never had any other, I never wanted to punch myself. If anything, I was like wanting to love myself. It was like I had a love. I said to myself, um, like, I'm like, y'all, here's my weeds, and, um, well, here they're tied up, but, you know, I'm free. Like, I wasn't afraid to be seen for who I was. It was like a, a really amazing feeling. And <clears throat> the Lord says in Isaiah 15, I'm trying to find the scripture, pull it up. Oh, I, I wrote it down. Yes. <laughs> Isaiah 57, 15. He lives outside of time and inside of eternity. And it says, For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. So he sits high and looks low. And this is the illustration that God gave me. Everybody put out your hand. And I want you to imagine that you have like a little mustard seed size little earth sitting on your hand. It's about the size of a mustard seed. And on that mustard seed is the whole earth. It's everybody on there and that represents time and this hand in, in you from the top to the bottom represents God and God is so vast and so big that he can't go on that earth because he's too big he wouldn't fit mm. so instead he sent himself through Jesus mm. and he planted it in Mary's womb see her there she is on the oh. earth down there okay and he planted her down there and he's sitting high and he's looking low, just like it says, if you go to the depths of the sea, there's God's feet, I'm with you. If you go to the heights of the heaven, there's God's face shining upon you. He's so vast, he's so big, are y'all seeing this? Mm -hmm. That he is outside of the earth, he's outside of time and space, he's outside of eternity, mm -hmm. and he sees everything that you've done. See, he's so big and you're so small compared to him. That he can hold your whole lifespan and your whole eternity mm. on your hand because it's inside that little earth. So he has everything, every part from your day one Man. to the day you die to the day he comes and gets you. Everything is in that little seed <clears throat> on God's hand. Do you see it? Wow. You see what I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. So he's so fast and so big that it's only natural for God to be outside of time. So he can speak to whatever part of your life he needs to, to bring it back to alignment. Mm. So this is what God wants to do with your weeds today. Come on. He wants us to go back mm. to the time you were molested, mm. to the time you were ridiculed, to the time that you were told that you're the dumb, to the time of the parents' divorce. And he wants to bring healing mm, yes. and extract those weeds before they're planted so that you can be healed. But if you are like me and you're hiding your, your weeds, 
<laughs> You're hiding your weeds, then you can't be healed. Let's see, what, it, what does it say in James 5, 5 16? I call this scripture for today, stop hiding your weeds. Yes. James 5, 5, 16 says, therefore confess your sins or your faults or your flaws or your weeds. One to another. And pray for one another that ye might be healed. It was not until my weeds, my eventually your weeds are going to get so big you can't hide them anymore. So you're either going to say, pray for me, deliver me. Or you're going to let them grow so big that they just form a weed tree. Did you know weeds can grow so big? They can start so small and they can grow where they form together and form an actual tree. We know that because we cut one down. <laughs> <laughs> and they're ugly. But that's the people in the world. That's the people where, you know, when the parables explained at the end of the age, where the, the angels come and they, they take, they bind together the weeds, throw them in the fire, wherever it's hell, and they get the harvest and take them. You know, the weeds, you have a choice to confess it. Lord, Let's get these weeds under control. Let's let's get them out. I want to get them out of my life. Yeah. But if you continue hiding them, you're actually allowing them to, to grow. grow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And mature and build and overtake the harvest, which is you. You are the harvest. You are the wow. uh, the kingdom of God is in you and is overtaking you. It's overtaking you as long as you allow your weeds to grow then they are overtaking your purpose. They're overtaking the plan of God. Every time, every day, we are either watering our harvest, which is the wheat, which is the thing that God has planted in this earth for his kingdom glory, or you are watering the weeds. And you water the weeds by being asleep. Mm. And let me tell you, when Rayon was was reading, I'm going I'm to open that back up. This is the scripture that... that uh, came out to me. So Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field. But verse 25, listen, it says, but while everyone was sleeping, everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So for a while, after those weeds were planted in my life as a young child, <laughs> My life was fine. The weeds hadn't grown up yet. Everything was good. It wasn't until I was in my 20s, you know, it took about, you know, 7 to 12 years for them to fully harvest and be seen. And so once that was done, he went away. But it says, while well, everyone was sleeping. Ephesians 5.14 says, wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Yes. If you are spiritually asleep, your weeds are growing. Mm. If you are spiritually asleep, it's so dangerous to be asleep during this time. Because your weeds, once weeds get to a certain point where they're so big, like when we bought the lake, when we were at the lake house, when you know, down there by the, the weeds were so out of control for years. Nobody ever did it. You saw Patrick. Nobody ever messed with them because it was too, it was just too much. Right. It was just, it would cost so much to get it fixed, which it did. You know, it's just out of control. And if you wait too long to get your weeds under control, then you're going to feel hopeless. You're going to feel like, I can't, I can't do this. And it's going to take you so many years to get it under control. So the Lord is saying today, wake up. Get your weeds under control. Stop hiding your weeds. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just want to listen right now to the, the Spirit of God, like which direction He... He wants us to go because I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful, you guys, that we have a God yes. who wants to clean us and make us whole. Yes. Make us whole. He wants to make you whole today. 
Does anybody feel this stirring in their spirit today? Yes. Does anybody need this today? Yes. Lord God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you, God, would come, that you would come and that you would search our hearts today. Search our hearts today. Search our minds today. And show us the way that you would have us to take, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It feels like there was something else I'm gonna say. I was gonna say, but I can't remember. Do you have something you want to say? I can't remember. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand to our feet real quick as we get ready to go home. I want to take a moment and go into a season of prayer. I feel like that we need to break some strongholds off our life. That's right. Yes. I feel that we need to break some strongholds off our life. You know, just because God has called you to do something, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And right. All the time, that's where we mess up, Patrick. We think, well, God called me to do this. The favor of God's on my life, and it's going to be easy. And what you must understand as a believer, God, is that the enemy is just going to just turn you loose. He's not going to just turn you loose because you walk into your purpose and you walk into your destiny. Right. Y'all remember when the disciples, Xavier, tried to cast a demon out of the child and they were not able to do it? Right. And they said, see, see you can be walking in the will of God and it can still be wrong. Yeah. And, he, and Jesus said, what? This only comes out by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Can I be real with y'all? If we're going to walk in the next level of favor and glory, we got to up our game. Mm. Yeah. 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 We got to up our game. We got to up our game. We Y'all thought our marriage was easy. No. Y'all thought our marriage was easy. Y'all thought we were just smiling and cute. Christy went through that. My dad was married, I think, to three or four or five women. Mm. So I went through that. And then my mom was married to three or four or five men. So mm. I went through that. Mm. You know, and then I wasn't a virgin. You know, I wasn't taught to be uh, right. saved before marriage. I wasn't taught that. So, Drew, I was, you know, under the sheets. When I was, you know, certain age. So I planted those seeds in my spirit. Right. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah, I'm up yeah. here talking about God is good and Jesus is good. And I think you find fine looking at your rear end. Come right. on, somebody. Right, I'm, right. I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all want to fake it. <laughs> I like to keep it real. Right. So we went through hell for five to six to seven to eight years of misery. But guess what? We kept on. Let, can, what my point is, just because God brought you together, God's calling you to do something, it don't mean it's going to be easy. easy right. Y'all got that twisted, baby. You can be called together. You can be with the woman you're supposed to be with, and all hell can be breaking loose in your life. Right. Can I be real and authentic? If we're going to get it to the next level, we got to up our game. You know, a lot of times as Christians, we think that if you're a Christian, just because you're Christian, you're going to be on fire for God. That's no, wrong. no. You know why you're not going to stay on fire for God? It rains. Mm -hmm. and right. What does that mean? The fire, fire goes, goes out. out. Yep. So you can be a Christian and not have any fire in your life. Yeah. And not have any power in your life. And not have any glory in your life. And still be a Christian. Yep. See, that's where we mess up. Though. We think because we're Christian, we're just going to automatically have fire every day. No, no, no. no. It rained in your life Monday. It rained Tuesday. It rained Wednesday. It rained Thursday. It rained Friday. You ain't got no fire. Right. If you want fire in your life, you got to light it back up. Right. You got to get the flame back out. You got to get back in the Word of God. Yep. You got to get back in prayer. You got to get back in your purpose. If you don't walk in your purpose, you have no reason for a flame. Right. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? If you want fire back in your life, see, you think because you ain't got fire no more, I'm supposed to stop serving God. You got it wrong. You got to get your fire back. The enemy is doing everything he can to put out your flames. Right. That's why y'all saying, well, it don't feel fire in here anymore. Are we praying for fire anymore? Right. Is anybody in here, watch this, watch this. I ain't calling nobody out, but is anybody in here praying for souls to be won on Sunday service? Right. Is there one person in here praying for souls to be saved right. every Sunday? You think just because we started church is just going to grow? Just because we hear, you think it's going to grow? You said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting people. Are you praying for people? Right. Are you praying for souls to be saved in your life? It ain't going to just happen. So you think because we started church, it's just going to be cute. You crazy. 
I ain't never had, I'm going to be honest with y'all. If y'all going to roll with me, I ain't never had nothing happen easy in my life. Right. I never had nobody call me and say, Doug, I want to mentor you to do this business. I, I never had nobody call me and say, Doug, I want to teach you how to partnership with Walmart. I never had any of that. I just called and scratched and prayed and fasted and got before the Lord. Can I be real with y'all? If this church is going to grow, we're going to have to go through a season of prayer and fasting and consecration. Because this is how the enemy is going to let it go right here. Right. If we want fire back, we got to bring it back. If we want glory back, we got to bring it back. If we want the anointing, and God will do his part, but you got to do your part first. Yeah. Come on, somebody. God said, I'll bless everything you put your hand to. If we're going to get this thing to the next level, Chrissy, can I be real? We got to go to a season of prayer yeah. Yeah. and a season of consecration and a season of fasting. You think you're going to get the house because you want a house? You crazy. The devil is just going to release the property that belongs to you. You got to go into a season of consecration. You, some of us, can I be real? We got to get back in the word. Yeah. You got to get back in the word. I'm telling you, you can't ask God for an authentic anointing and you're on Instagram and Facebook more than you are in the word. And I know that sounds stale and it sounds antiquated and it sounds out of date, but you got to get back in the word. You got to be a word junkie. Come on, right. let's be real. Stephen Curry practices basketball hours every day. Y'all saw the video where he shot 105 three, three throws in a uh, three pointers in a row. That took like 15, 10 minutes, whatever, just to play the video. Right. This man's practicing. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? We got to get, like, like for real, I'm going to be honest with y'all, Drew. If, and this might not be your church where you want to be, and I'm cool with that. I ain't going to get in my emotions. I'm over it. Like, if you can, if y'all can't tell that I've changed, then you ain't looking at me straight. Right, right, right. I, I'm over it. Like, I used to get in my feelings. I'm cool. But while you're here, you ought to be helping me with some souls. Right. Because, see, I'm anointed by God to preach like an evangelist. You know, and that's just who I am. Yes. I can preach to some drug dealers and they're going to like me. I can preach to, to some needleheads and they're going to like me because I grew up in it and I came for that. But I need y'all to help me with some souls. We need to go into a season. For the, so for the last, and come on with me now, Drew. Play with me. Yes. Come on, Patrick. Y'all know I'm a dead gummy evangelist. Thank you, Jesus. I want you not to like me. I'll preach these devils right off your mind in the right. name of Jesus. Yeah. If we're going to make it to the next level, we got to go into a season of prayer and consecration. Yeah. If your marriage is going to make it to the next level, can I be real with you? Yeah. You got to go into a season of prayer and consecration. Christy was wanting to commit suicide and I was wanting to have a sex with another woman. Mix that combination together. <laughs> That's kind of wilding out right there. Mm -hmm. She want a knife in her wrist and I want to be in the car with somebody. Uh -huh. Right. So it was prayer and consecration and stand before the Lord. That's why we all here smiling up here now. Cute. This is 18 years of hell, but we made it. Amen. I want to challenge y'all to up y'all's game this year. And I know some of y'all probably have more horrific testimonies than I do, and my wife does. But you can make it if you want to. You can win if you want to. You can get the fire of God back in your life if you want to. If you want the healing power of God in your life, then start following ministries that have healing anointings on them. Start watching Benny Hinn. You say, Benny Hinn, he went through a divorce. David went through a divorce or two, if I'm not mistaken. He had a little affair on the side, and you cool with reading uh, Psalms. Solomon had a little uh, relationship on the side of here, too, and you cool with reading all the books he wrote in the Bible. Right, right. Well, Benny Hinn went through a divorce. Yeah, he got remarried, so leave the man alone. Right. He got a healing ministry on his life. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to get y'all to widen y'all's horizon. There's an anointing on your life, but you got to stir it up again. If you want healing in your life, then study healing ministries. Don't just study Instagram and TikTok and Twitter. I don't know about y'all, but I want a healing ministry in my life. I want to preach the gospel to people, and when I preach it, I'm telling you, I want the power of God to set them free. That's why I watch preaching every day, even though it gets on my nerves. I get sick of watching preaching. I watch Joel Osteen. I watch them all. I ain't judging nobody because I want God's glory in my life. I want his favor in my life, and I ain't picky about how he does it. If you got to speak to me, God, through Joel Osteen, then get your preaching on God. I listen to white preachers, black preachers, Hispanic preachers. I listen to them all because I want to serve the gift of God that's in me. I ain't dying and then going to the grave. And not be everything God's called me to be. I'm not just going to settle here, Christy, and just say this is as far as we're supposed to make. I realize now that there is more in us. Yeah. And we're going to have to push 
and we're going to pray. And I came to tell you this morning, there is more in you. There is a great anointing on your life on your life. The hand of God is on your life, but the devil don't want to turn you loose. But I came to prophesy to you today by the, in the name of Jesus that everything that's been holding you bound, everything that's been holding you captive, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of lust. Yeah. Can any man in here besides me be authentic? Come on. Y'all can leave me hanging, but you deal with the spirit of lust. Let's be real today. Yeah. Come on. I got to break that thing in the name of Jesus. And it, come on, come on, man. Let's yeah. be real. I'm sick of that thing. Look, that thing was so strong on me. Xavier, this is how strong that thing was on me. I would go to bed and have dreams about it and think that thing was real. Right. And wake up, I'm talking about confused. Right. Like, yeah, and I'm and I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be a man of God. Right. And I'm dreaming. Y'all, y'all gonna leave me out there. Uh -huh. That stuff was so real at night. When I would wake up, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Right. But I kept on getting in the Word and kept on praying and kept on going to church. And God has slowly but surely broke that demon off me. Now, I'm not saying he don't try to come back here once in a while. But I re rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And when I see a big booty, I turn my head the <laughs> other way. Because there is an assignment on my life, and it's to break every generational curse on my family. And I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be authentic. If I got to die doing it, I'll see you at my funeral. Right. Amen. Amen. If I got to die to break this curse, I hope I see you at my funeral. Yeah. Because it's going down. Right. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to be all God's called me to be. I'm going to do whatever I got to do, Chrissy, to stay married to the day I die. Yeah. If I got to go on prayer and fasting and consecration and get in the word and listen to a sermon every day. Pastor, y'all know I listen to sermons all day, every day. You know why I'm crazy? You see the smile of me, but I know the lust me. Right. I know the crazy lunatic me. The lunatic that wants to rob the bank like Barney and Clyde be gone. Right. <laughs> you got to feed yourself on the level God is calling you to lead on. If, if this one sermon you get from me, I'm going to tell you that ain't enough. Right. That ain't enough. And I, I, I'm getting right preach good. I ain't there yet, but I'm working on it, Ray. <laughs> but you got to feed yourself. Let's be real. You eat hamburgers every day and hot dogs every day. That's why you think around your reels. Right. You got to get in the word if you won't fire your back. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And I know that might frustrate you, but get in the word. If you watch Instagram and TikTok and Twitter, guess what? You're going to be frustrated because guess what's on there? Drama. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. And I'm not bashing it, but I'm saying you got to feed yourself on the level God's calling you to lead on. This church will not grow. I'm going to tell y'all right now. I agree. Bishop Jackson here. It will not grow until we go into a season of prayer and fasting. Like, if we ain't praying for souls to be one every Sunday, it will not happen. Right. The devil will laugh at us. Right. The devil's got the same amount of faith we do. Right. He believes in God just like us. I want y'all to make up in y'all's mind and commit to, to this thing. Yeah. Even if this ain't your home church, I promise you I'm cool with it. You can tell me today, say, Doug, God told me to leave. I'm going to say thank you, Jesus, and I'm going to pray for you. I'm being honest with y'all. Everybody that's left the church, I ain't mad at none of them. What was her name that used to sit right here? Uh, Felicia. I ain't mad at Felicia. May the Lord be with her. Y'all, I want y'all to win in life. I want people to win in life. Somebody shout, it's my winning season. It's my winning season. So listen, if y'all want to see this church, the power of God and the favor of God and the move of God, it's going to depend on all of us. Right. It ain't just going to be Doug and Christie's uh, prayer life. It's going to be all our prayer life. It's going to be all our constant it's going to be all of us getting in the Word. It's going to be all of us coming here expecting God for a miracle. It's going to be all of us coming here and saying, God, I want you to move in this church. This might not even be my church home, but God, I want to see a breakthrough in here. I want to see people healed. I want to see people delivered. I want to be, see people saved. But I'm excited, y'all. I, I took this week off, and, and it was not good for me because my mind begins to just twirl and twist and ramble and go. But I needed this. But next week, I, I believe I'm going to preach. You know, to be honest, you know, one reason I, I didn't preach this Sunday is I wanted to give y'all a break from hearing me. Give y'all a break from me because I know I'm crazy and extreme. 
I'm going to be back next Sunday. I'm going to be back. And I hope you just deal with this white boy. I hope you deal with white. Thank you, Jesus. White chocolate, whatever you want to call it. I'm giving in. I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why? Why would I say I am? Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you're a rapper. I'm lucky I can't rap. If I could rap, I would rap. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know. I'm not sure. Country Wayne in here. <laughs> Shout it out! Yeah. I love God. I'm telling you, I love God. I love God. He, he makes me smile. He makes me smile. I'm telling you, God gives me joy. God gives me peace. And, and, and it's not my wife or my family or my kids, and I appreciate all them, but I ain't going to put that burden on them. It's God that gives me my joy. It's God that gives me my peace. What's Tasha Cobb say? Oh, how he loves me. Yeah. Oh, how, what is it? Help me, Bree. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. It's God that does this. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm excited about what we're about to do in here. This is something I want to challenge y'all to do. For the last two months, Bree, can we go through a season of prayer and consecration? And even if you feel like God's calling you to be this uh, in, in, international apostle, Pray for this little church right here that we win souls. Yeah. Like, I believe we can catch a flame if we, get, we go into a season of prayer and, and fasting. Right. And for some of y'all, that might be food, like a honey bun today, whatever it is you're addicted to. For some of y'all, it might be social media, but for the last two months of this year, I want to challenge everybody to go into a season of prayer and consecration and fasting. Mm. And I know most churches wait to January, but we're going to, by January, we're going to be stepping into something. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's for you, if it's food. Fasting don't necessarily got to be food. Right. But for some of you, maybe it's one day uh, a week. You go through a whole day where you fast the whole day. Or so. I'm going to be fasting. I don't know if it's going to be from food or social media. But I want to see God's glory in my life. I want to see that. Y'all, I'm going to be honest with y'all, and I'll let y'all go. But I cannot read the Bible where it says they can experience healing and us not do that. Yeah, yeah. Like sooner or later, and I don't know when, but I got to be able to lay my hands on somebody and see somebody get healed. I just got to see it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. I, I can't just go to church and it be a social club. Right. I got to see the power of God. I got to see it in my lifetime. If it's the only thing I do. But I'm excited. Thanksgiving, y'all. We're going out. We went, uh, me and Jesus went yesterday. We found a homeless village. Yeah, yeah. A village. So, I mean, it was a village. Mm -hmm. Was it not, Jesus? It's a oh, yeah. village. Yep. And I want to challenge y'all, whoever can. I feel glory here. Right? Yeah, yeah. Somebody. Shelf! Yes. I feel it. Come on with me, Drew. Yeah. But if y'all want to, like 8 a.m. or something on Thanksgiving, and I know that's the day that you spend time with your family, but if y'all want to, like, we can get up at 8 a.m. and go bless them and still go be back at your family's house at 10 a.m. Right. Come on, they ain't nothing to your house. You might as well go make some sandwiches and feed these homeless people. Come on. So I want to challenge all of y'all. This is how my mama used to do it. This is how we would do it, Drew. We would get a whole loaf of bread, put mayonnaise all the way through the whole loaf, and then bologna or ham or something. Let's bless them on that level. You ain't got to spend $100, $1,000. Do it on your level. But I want to challenge y'all to get some cookies and some cream and some ice cream or whatever, toothpaste. Some, some soap or something and let's go bless these people let's go bless these people and I feel like Ray I feel like this I don't know if this confirms with anything in anybody's spirit but we need to start doing outreaches once a month and quit waiting on everybody to endorse us ain't nobody going to endorse this ministry I'm going to tell y'all that now I'm going to tell y'all this, 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 this ain't coming we got to go and move and then God will do his part we got to go and move we got to take the little two fish we got five loaves of bread and God was stretching. We got to take the toothpaste we got in the closet. Right. And we got to move. And then God will come. Talk to me, somebody. I want us to start planning. And maybe this is for, for one of y'all. I don't know. Maybe it's for you. I don't know. We need to start planning outreaches once a month. Come on, somebody. You talking about the, we got the money. We got the money. We got to move into it. We got to step into it. We got to walk into it. We got to quit waiting on God. You waiting on God to bless your business. And God said, I'm waiting on you. Yeah. God ain't going to bless your business and it's sitting in the closet, hidden on the shelf. You crazy. You want a house? When's the last time a loan officer told you no? Right. Come on, somebody. 
You got to move into action. Another thing that I'll, I'll tell you, I was sitting there, God was speaking to me. Once a month, we need to start having a fellowship Sunday. Where after service, after service, at, at, no, listen, after service, we need to get over to the gym and play basketball and eat and invite people to church. Right. Talk to me, somebody. That needs to be every month. Now, I'm saying this, and I'm going to do it. Now, if you ain't got my back, I'm going to do it by myself. I'm gangster like that. I, I might even get the tattoo on my face like Mike Tyson. Don't fool me. I swear I'm doing it. I'll do it. On my head. On my head. I'm ready to go with the all God called me to be. Amen. What y'all playing? Thank you for the things the Lord has done. Is that what y'all playing? 